Hello and welcome to the Babbles Travelling Yarns podcast. My name is Grace and you can find me as Vanna Willemiel on Instagram, on Ravelry, on... that's it. I always want to add another one, I don't know, for the sake of trees. Um, so you can see that I've got a little ring light. It's so cute because it's so dark and so miserable. And I've got the overhead lights which gives me the forehead of doom. It just means I've got lots of brains. I need like a fringe to hide this. Hey, this would look cute if I ever got out of bed early enough to do anything with my hair. Nope, much rather sleeping. Now, yes, what, where was I? Oh yes, um, places you can find me on the Wimped Webs. I have a website called babblestravellingyarns.com and that's where you can find details of the retreat that I'm hosting in April. It is now sold out. Um, however, I am going to be hosting more. So if you would like to, you can pop over to the website and um, subscribe to my mailing list and you will be the first ones to find out when the... Um, the next retreats are going to take place. I'm super excited about that. 2018 is the year that that really kicks off. So excited, I'm going to at least have two a year, I believe. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so this podcast, I'm gonna be talking about, I haven't really had anything planned um, because I've been doing lots of vlogmases. I've really enjoyed them. I've just come back from holidays. If you're interested in hearing all about that and all the yarn shops I went to, have a little look at my vlogmases and you will get all the overshare. Yes, all of it. Um, we also just got a little kitten called Beans and he's on my lap and he's sleeping. He's sleeping right now. This is the only place he sleeps and James's lap as well. He leaks, He needs people to sleep I want to keep it happening forever. I've got so much to talk about actually. Um, first off, have I said everything I need to say? Um, yes, first off, I'm going to announce the winners of the Outlander Cow, which I hosted for the last three months uh, from September 10th to December 10th, except I just closed it this morning, which is the 16th of December, so shush, don't tell anyone. But um, yeah, so we have two winners, one from the chatter thread and one from the finished object thread. So the chatter thread, I just have it written on my computer over there. So the chatter thread, uh, the winner was Megan from the United States and she is Knit Mummy 2 on Ravelry and I have magic linked you in the announcement of the winner on the thread itself. So Megan, I want you to get back to me with your... Um, mailing address and I can post out this prize to you. So I've decided to pull from one of my yarns with this is August Skies and I'd love to send this off to you. It probably won't get to you before Christmas but it would be a nice New Year's present for you. So I'm going to wrap this up and get this ready to go. You contact me with your address and everything will be great. Now the second winner, before my computer goes to sleep, is from the finished object, objects thread and oh my gosh. The stuff that was in the finished object thread was stunning. There were some like, there was some people that were hand spinning their own yarn. There was a woman who spun an amazing amount of yarn. It was glorious. Um, there were hats and shawls and fingerless mitts. Um, it was absolutely beautiful, beautiful stuff, fabulous. We had 26 winners in all and random number generator picked number 26, which is really nice because you know, it means that it's truly like random. They're like, you know, I'm not just gonna pick the middle. So number 26 was the last entry, of course, and it was Sarah Turner Classic, who is Yarn Lab. And I only found out about this because she won my thing. So she's Yarn Lab, she's got a podcast channel, she's got a YouTube channel, she's, she dyes yarn, she sells patterns. The pattern that she, that the, 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 the post that she won on, the finished object, was a was yarn that she spun herself, a pattern that she designed herself, and of course she knitted herself. How amazing, this, this trifecta of wonderful beauty. I'm really super impressed. Um, so well done, Sarah. I'm super glad you won. Yay! So as well, um, I want you to get in contact with me. And what did you win? Okay, so you have a choice to make. So I've got these two beautiful bags from Longview Creations. And one is this beautiful chocolatey brown and one of this one is this light grey. And on the inside, 
the light grey one has a dark kind of uh, a basket, like a, a woven um, printed fabric. And then the brown one has, oh, this is so cute. This has little, little kind of plant twig fabric. It's nice and bright. So it's totally up to you which one you would like, Sarah. Well done. Um, now, as well as the bag, you are also getting an incredible kit of yarn from the Moon and Sixpence. It was hand dyed yarn, Irish hand dyed yarn. The Moon and Sixpence, and this is the Castaway kit, and you get beautiful stitch markers with that. And oh my god, this is so stunning. It's just the most beautiful colours. It reminds me of like the earthiness of the Scottish woods, and then of course Voyager, which is the sea journey. And then there's all of this story mixed up in between the two. It's just beautiful. Um, and I also have a wonderful set of stitch markers from Marion Prince and uh, who is a girl that just lives down the road from me so they're just beautiful. Oh, Mr. Norris has woken up. Mr. Nor Mr. Beans Norris. Mr. Beans. I don't know why I keep calling him Mr. Norris because we already have a Norris in the family. That's why. So I want you both to get in contact with me. I'm super excited, Megan and Sarah. And um, yeah, I'm really glad you both won. I'm so happy. Now, I want to talk about another. So one cal closes, another one opens, starts. So I have been promising my boyfriend, James, that I would knit him a something, knit him a jumper. I have not knit him a jumper because he is a large man and he is um, he's just so tall and it will just take forever. So I've decided, you know what, the 1st of January I'm going to start to knit a sweater. And I put up a post on Instagram and everyone was like, I need to do this too, I need to do this too, I need to do this too, I need to do this too. So um, yeah, so I'm starting an epic along. <laughs> Grace from the two weeks into the future who just realized as she started editing that she's wearing the same top. So maybe you might not even notice that this is like completely different timing. Anyway, I just wanted to update. Um, I had made a slightly different decision about where I'm gonna go with the Epic Along and I'm really excited about it. So the Epic Along is going to be basically any project that is going to be, that it seems epic to you. So I'm going to be knitting a massive jumper for my boyfriend and um, a lot of other people said that they want to knit jumpers for their partner or for, you know, for a, a girl contacted me and she wants to make a wedding shawl, like an heirloom lace, Shetland lace wedding shawl, like one of those wedding ring shawls. I'm like, <gasps> and then other people are going to be tackling their first garments because I understand everyone has a different um, idea and difficulty level um so i just thought i'd open it out so it's going to start at about it's going to be on for about six months so from the first of january until the first of july is that right or the first of june anyway we're gonna keep it cash lads you know me so um yeah so i decided to run it for at least six months and then if we all need a bit more time i'll extend it to a year you know what i mean like these projects are epic and this it's this does include whips but the whip hasn't um has to be at least um it can't be more than 50 percent done do you know what i mean just to make it like you can't have like a bind off to do and then you're done do you know what i mean so yeah so 50 percent under 50 percent done whips and cast ons i'm going to be casting on on the first which is now tomorrow the rest of the podcast was filmed two weeks ago before Christmas. Sorry. Me. You know, you got me on Vlogmas, so I hope you enjoyed that. Anyway, back to the reg regularly scheduled programming. P.S. I'll be popping in later on to give more updates about stuff that's happened. <laughs> so what am I going to be knitting? Oh, yes. This is an ancient, ancient, ancient bag. Now, I only bought it last year at EYF, but this year at EYF but it's soon going to be last year. So this is the Nahani River kit by Simply Shetland and I this is this includes 21 25 gram balls 
of Jemison's Shetland Spindrift and a pattern and it's the Nahani River pattern which is a stunning pattern and the sock Notician is actually making it as well and it is a really nice design pattern it's beautiful sorry I don't want the ring light shining all over it but um yeah so I bought the kit thinking that's a great idea no I didn't touch it I did do a swatch I did do a swatch so this is my little swatch and can I remember what needle size I used no so that's is where we're stuck I think I started off with a recommended needle size and then I went up that's what it looks like and I'm wondering is up better but I you see I really like the density of this like I like the flatness of the like my roll gauge seems to be the one that's kind of spreading out so I uh, I really like this one but I realize that this is gonna take forever if I do it at this tiny gauge however if I do it at a larger gauge that means that it will get done faster it won't be super warm because James runs hot um, yeah, so I think I'm going to have to do another swatch and see if my gauge has changed because I did this six months ago. And if anyone has seen Nathan's terrible, sad journey of um, how his gauge changed halfway through his jumper and how he had to rip out everything, it, it makes me think I need to do this again. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this over Christmas. I'm going to do a little swatch over Christmas and then cast on with the sweater on the 1st of January. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, now I know it doesn't have sleeves, which makes me feel like, oh, thank God. I'm gonna open up the chatter thread um, before we start, just to kind of, and I am gonna try and uh, take part in the chatter thread this time. I feel like I lose, I lose a bit of impetus sometimes with Ravelry and with giveaways, but I really think I need the push for this um, just to get this done because I, it's, just such a beautiful design and James will not stop talking about it. <sighs> so annoying. Keeping my promises, he expects me to do that. Ridiculous. So yeah. <laughs> so it's the Epic Along and um, yeah, 2017 uh, or 2018 for 2018. But I'm just going to do the uh, hashtag Epic Along. I don't know if it has been taken already, but I might adjust that. But yes, so what else should I talk? So that's the cows out of the way. How wonderful. Now, I have a kind of a serious thing that I need to talk about. Kind of a serious thing. Um, and it's about my own work-life balance. I've been thinking a lot about it and I've been talking with James a lot about it. And I've decided that I am doing way too much. Um, I can't um, keep it up and I can't commit to everything that I have committed myself to so something's gotta go. So I've decided to um, pull away from Patreon. I've decided to um, shut down my Patreon account and um, just because, I'll, I'll give you a few reasons why, um, I I do, I, I, there's a, I put a lot of pressure on myself to create special Patreon content, um, but I'm not very, I'm not very, um, what's the word? Consistent at it, which is bad because Patreon is like consistently paying me, which I feel terrible about. And then when I do, and I am good at like putting up specific Patreon content, nobody watches. So I feel like I'm putting all this work in, effort in, and n nobody's watching and I'm like, mm, I don't like that. So I've decided to shut it down um, what I want to do is to all of the $10 Patreons who haven't won a prize, you are all going to get a prize. So, um, on the 1st of January, after I've shut it down, I, I want you all to send me your, your mailing addresses and I will send you out a New Year's prize. Um, just for, just to thank you for your support during the year. I really do appreciate it and thank you so much. And, um, yeah, so that's something that I want to do for you guys because you've been super supportive and thank you so much. But I don't necessarily need the funds um, 
I'm not relying on the Patreon funds and I feel like it's giving me extra pressure, like a, a really a large amount of pressure, like it's been keeping me up at night and the amount of money that comes in, comes in from it isn't worth that pressure. So I'm going to shut that down. Now, the twofold part of this is that um, the Patreon has been how I am uh, funding the VKNs, the virtual knit night, uh, the Zoom room. So what I'm going to do is, um, I, I, I have been feeling a lot of pressure towards about about the uh, the VKNs as well, just from myself, and um, it's gotten to this stage where it kind of runs itself. So I, and and to be honest, um, it's it's two nights a week, which doesn't seem like a lot. But for me, I'm now starting an on-call rota. I'm now starting to work a lot more in the evenings and at night. And it doesn't suit my schedule anymore. And I, I am actually feeling super nervous about even telling you this because I, I feel like a lot of people rely on the virtual knit nights for, do you know what, they, they, they don't have virtual knit nights. Or they don't have knit nights around them. They don't have you know, things like that, um, just accessible to them. And I feel terrible that I'm gonna be stepping away from that, but that does not mean that it's over. It does not mean that it's over, over, over forever. You know, the, the, gr the, group, of, the group of people that have come on and grown the group past what I can not control, but it is kind of a, you know, kind of, it's it's grown past just me, just my friends. You know, it's that they, they, you know, they've made their own massive group of friends and wonderful, wonderful people, and um, I feel like I I don't have the the energy or the time to keep up. And we have been trying to work out a few different ways of doing it. I've been um, appointing moderators and, um, you know, they've, they've asked to be mo appointed moderators and I'm, I was more than happy to do that, but um, I'm still getting, um, I, I can't, I just can't keep up, I can't do it all. Um, and I want to concentrate a bit more on my business. I want to concentrate more on organizing the retreats. I want to concentrate more on, um, um, some big events happening in 2018. I'm so excited about it. I'll be talking about it later. Um, I want to go to more yarn shows. I want to travel a bit more. I, you know, I want to, that's, that's what my aim is. Um, and if I am tied in to hosting, even though I've not really been hosting for the last couple of weeks because of this situation, you know, I've been traveling and I've been working and I've not been able to do it, which means that I shouldn't really be organizing it. Um, and I think I've just, I've just lost a bit of impetus. Everyone gets to that stage, don't they? They're just like, I've got so much more on my plate now. Now I'm, I'm, I really don't want anyone to be like upset or annoyed at me. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I love you all, but I just can't, I just can't do it all. And I want to concentrate on other parts of my business and other parts of, um, what I want to do with my own life. And, um, to be honest, um, James has mentioned a couple of times that it's kind of, um, it's interrupting my life a little bit, um, just because I've got a real knit night that I do on Wednesdays and Thursdays, um, and then I've got, uh, the weekend knit night is Saturday and then sometimes Sunday as well, and then Tuesday night too, and I'm trying to go to, like, a, a, a fitness class on Monday, so really we only have, like, one night a week together, which is, is just not enough, um, so... And no matter how many people try and get James into the knitting thing, it's just not his thing. You know, he's just not not interested. He wants to spend time with me. He wants to like go to the movies with me, or you know, go for walks in the evening, as the in the spring when things get nicer. And of course, he can do that. But I still feel like, oh, I've got to get home because I've got to go. To, I've got to do VKN. I've got to do VKN. And he's like, oh, you know, let's blame him. Blame the boy. But it is, it is my own decision as well. I have been feeling this a lot. And I want to be honest with you and I want to make sure that um, I really do want it to continue. Hello again. So I have um, 
we have it all organized and it's all set up. So the uh, the virtual knit nights will be a um, will will now be run by Phil and Eleni, um, who is um, Eleni is Manicory Creations on Instagram, and Phil is. Uh, the quicksand zone so they're known as the Greeks and um, I will be staying on as a moderator just to help them out with a few things which is super nice because they asked me to do that um, so yeah it's going to be carrying on the name will be announced uh, we have a name and we are keeping all of the things the same so the only thing that I can't manage to hand over to the Greeks is the Babbles VKN Instagram group now I will be posting on that group until the end of January just to allow people to switch over from there but the Facebook group is going to be the same and the Zoom room number is still the same it's the same room we're not changing venue or anything so I'm just handing over um, all the details of the Zoom room and the Zoom account to them to the Greeks and then I will be a moderator and I'll be you know helping out um, just kind of popping on to say hi to everybody because basically yeah so yeah I'm really really excited about this new 2018 thing you can obviously see in my face the relief <laughs> I was just editing there and I was like oh Grace you were so sad <laughs> it was a really good decision um to uh, to hand it over and um yeah so it's nice that that it's now been given into the like passed on a little bit into the community and um yeah, I'm really happy about that. So we had a lovely VKN last night, and today actually, which is the it's the 31st, um, we are going to be doing the changeover. So um, I will be popping down below. It is still called Babbles VKNs on this group, but it will be uh, changed as of tomorrow. And I will adjust the notes down, down below um, once um, we have announced the name. But sure it's all the same do you know what I mean if you're part of the if you're part of the group if you're part of the mailing list um, I will be passing over the mailing list to Phil and, um, Phil and Eleni so um, yeah you'll still get all the details there's gonna be no real change to yourselves um, the only thing is the Instagram group will change over so yeah yay so yeah, okay, great. That's all I needed to say. Thank you so much, Phil and Lenny, for taking it on. Thank you so much to everyone who showed an interest and who cares so much about the group. And I'm so delighted with the way the group has grown. I'm just amazed by everybody. And I'm really delighted that I can move it on and take part still and not feel overwhelmed. Um, yeah. Congratulations, everybody! Everybody did a great job! Yay! Woo! 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 Okay, bye. Go back. Bye. So, let's get on to the nitty gritty, shall we? <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit. I can't show you any FOs because I've not finished anything. No, I have finished everything, but they've all gone off as presents. So, I knit some beautiful hats out of Apple Oak Dye Works. Wait, is that right? Yes. Apple Oak Dye Works, yes. Um, I was talking a bit about it, um, I think on the previous podcast, um, I knit something out of Witch Fire, which uh, was dyed with cochineal and then over dyed with indigo, I believe. And I contacted the dyer, lovely Jenny, and she explained that indigo does this and it's called crocking and, or um, someone else actually explained it was called crocking, I think. And it's just like, an, that's what happens with blue jeans. Like blue jeans were traditionally dyed with indigo and it comes off in the first couple of washes and that's just the way indigo is. And I was like, that is fascinating. So she sent me this whole email about like, you know, mordants and dyeing and natural dyeing. And oh, it's so, so interesting. So I'm going to properly read them over because I just got it like 10 minutes ago. Um, so yeah, so I knit, uh, I was knitting a, um, a cowl for myself. Well, I was knitting a hat for someone else and then I realized it was way too big. And so I ripped it out and then I cast it on again, realized it was still way too big. What? So I just decided to make a cowl for myself.
and then I cast on a beautiful bank head, which you can see in the vlogs if you want. Um, a beautiful bank head hat for James's father, who literally put it on and did not take That's it. That's a nice hat you've got on there, Thanks. James. Where'd Thanks. you get it? Literally just, get, just, literally just got it. Hot off the needles. Yeah. Hot. And the ends are woven in. Careful not to burn your head with the hot hat. Pictures. More pictures. This is embarrassing at all. Pee. Pee then. It's fine. I can, I can like this is like. <laughs> uh, we had a, a Christmas in um, in James's house um, in the last uh, last week. We went over and we spent some time with them, and that was lovely. Um, and then I made two hats, one for James's sister and one for James's mum. And I made some really quick pom-poms just on my fingers, just wrapping around, tying it around and just... And they were like, it's magical. I was like, I know, it's so amazing. So it's like a super cosy hat. Really good for talk walks. So that's that one. And this is this one. Because it matches a coat that I knit last year. So, yes, um, yes, what was I going to say? Yeah, so, um, I may, so I finished three hats. I had actually finished a cowl and three hats, so that's super impressive. Um, but I didn't do anything else. I didn't finish anything else. So, but what did I do? So, when I was away, I only brought one other thing. I brought my gift knitting and then one other thing. And... This one other thing was some sock yarn that I dyed myself. It was my country Christmas colorway. And this is super cute. So at first when I when I kind of balled this up, I was kind of like, oh, it's a bit dull, it's a bit muddy, it's a bit brown, isn't it? And then I was like, actually, I'm kind of in love with it. It's it's muted, it's not like bright in your face um uh Christmas, you know, it's it, I called it country Christmas because I imagined like you know you'd be in a in a um, a country cabin a log cabin in the forest and there's little pops of uh, so it's actually striping as it's as it as it knits up which I didn't anticipate at all um, if you imagine the skein to be in a circle I dyed opposite sides so opposite sides of the circle red and then opposite sides of the circle green and then there was a few little specks and popples inside little dye blips and bobs you know the way it goes and it's micro striping and it's the cutest thing sorry they've all been scrubbed up in my bag but it's doing this micro stripe and they're they're teeny tiny socks for me so I from actually I got this idea from Robert who's on the VKNs, um, this really beautiful idea of a three, three, three in one rib, which is just lovely. And so it was starting off with this and I was terrified that this would start really badly pooling or something. But no, the stripes just got a little bit narrower as it was going. So cute. So, um... I'm doing two at a time socks because that's how I do socks if I'm not doing one big long afterthought heel sock which I still haven't finished by the way. But if you can see there is some parts of it that have a little bit of yellow in there which just reminds me of like a roaring fire. Christmas always means a roaring fire. Even an open fire or a stove or some sort of warm burning thing. I think I have a bit of a fire obsession but Every time I go home, I'm just like in front of the fire. I love it so much. I've got to go down to my granny's as well because um, she's got a fabulous fire that she keeps running. But they're coming up so cute. Now these are super long now because I went to the cinema two nights ago to see Star Wars. Oh my God, it's so good, it's so good guys. And I, I, wasn't, I wasn't bothered about the heels, so I didn't put in the heel. <laughs> but what I could probably do is put in the heel now and this be a super long sock. That might be nice. I don't know, I need to see. But I basically just took it because I had nothing else ready to go. And I was like, eh, afterthought heel then. Um, or super long socks. But I think they're a bit narrow to go up my leg all the way. <laughs> Oop, I'm 
sorry Bean. I just dropped it. Drop my socks. So I have this. Oh god, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Bean got so sorry. Oh, I just found my clip. Yay. Um, so I found I'm making it in, I have it in this my little perfect sock bag from Mina Makes. Oh, excuse me. And I've got my little sock key ring on it just to remind me I've got socks in here but sometimes I've got shawls or small shawls or something like that in there so it is handy to have those little key rings from Knitting I Love Shop um, yeah so that's what I've been working on and these sharp needles high high sharps and 2.5 high high sharp needles have got through about 60 billion sets of security because there was security all over France like going up to all of the big 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 buildings like the Eiffel Tower and the Arc de Triomphe and where else do we go? I can't think now. Sacre Coeur. I can't think. It's all in the vlogs. Um, yeah so that was super 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 cute. I love them. They're coming up super cute and actually it's the first time I'm knitting with my own yarn. I feel bad that I've been selling it without knitting it and testing it. But sure, you've got to start somewhere, don't you? So speaking of socks, these are another pair of socks, which I have not finished, but I have put toes in and I'm not sure if I've spoken about them before, but this is my afterthought, everything sock and I just need to put in the heel. I will, I promise. So this is out of pretty, this is out of Strand Designs. Where are you, Karina? Karina. You're breaking my heart. Yeah, there she is. So it's Strand Designs. She's an Irish dyer. Uh, Karina Conran. Uh, Strand Designs on Etsy, I believe. But I actually got another kind of self-striping like this because I love it so much. I got this one, which is called Frosted Holly. Oh, and it's just going to be so this light, the ring light actually picks up the colours really well. Like, that is nice. So, oh, but I have her other self-striping yarn to cast on, which is the St. Patrick's Day one. So I'm going to cast that on um, probably in the new year at some point, just for St. Patrick's Day, and I'll be able to wear them for St. Patrick's Day. But Karina always sends like a little treat. So this is what she sent with the, with the St. Patrick's Day yarn. And then she sent this amazing DPN cozy, because she doesn't just make a yarn, she makes, oh, love this i was looking at actually she has some christmas bags for nothing next to nothing on her shop so you should go over and have a look um because they're like on sale oh my god they're so pretty i don't know if she's put it on holidays yet but hopefully not um you probably won't get it for christmas but you know new year's treats <laughs> so um yeah so those are the two socks that i'm working on which feels weird to have two pairs of socks one sock not finished <gasps> This is the danger with the afterthought. You're like, oh, I'm done. I'm going to leave that there forever. Never put this I mean, I could wear those now without the heels. They're just tube socks. So let's talk a little bit about the sweater. So Mina Philip. Phillips, Philip, Mina Phillips, Mina Philip. Sorry, Mina. That's terrible. I'm so sorry. I can't remember right now. Oh no, I have your thing. Oh yes, okay, I have the pattern right here. So your name is actually on. I'm super careful about this lipstick getting everywhere because it does. So I am making the mix and match sweater by Mina Philip, no S, excellent. So I'm making the adult version of this sweater, which is actually gonna be a cardigan. So exciting. So it's a cardigan with a shawl collar and you can do like a dip hem thing. I'm totally doing that. There's so many options in this pattern. That's the whole point of this pattern, that you can mix and match your favorite parts of all of your sweaters. I'm so excited. So you can do this beautiful textured stitch like she did on little Layla's jumper. Layla had so little hair back then. Layla, no, she has like a full head. She's adorable. So I have decided to dye up my own kit. And it's a fade kit because it's like an ombre. It's not like a speckle. It's an ombre 
of this I believe is a non superwash I might that I need to I need to research that but this is the yarn that I'm using it this is from Laxton's in the UK it's a UK um, Zwartbulls and something else oh gosh I need to I need to do up some labels for myself just so I know what I dyed but it this is the lightest color it's a mauve and then I'm going to be moving on to this one and it's going to dip right down into that this deep burgundy which is all the way down the bottom of my bag Mr. Beans is on my lap and I'm scared to wake him up Mr. Beans are you okay can you see this here actually this might be handy so it's in this beautiful sweater bag by um, Cottage Number no. Nine. Stunning, and look at the inside pockets in here. Turn around so you can see. Inside pockets is for things like your extra set of needles and your little gauge swatch, which matched perfectly. Oh my goodness, it was amazing. Yeah, and you get this really cute little stitch marker. And then I put this on this sweater. Sweater. Well, what else can be in this ugly Christmas sweater bag? It's perfect. Okay, so what have I got in here? Oh, I've got my little lush bar. Handy. Oh, it also comes with this amazing little notions pouch, I believe. Oh my gosh, I didn't see. Oh no, that's. I thought this was like a little loop. No, it's my actual. <laughs> I'm such a fool. So yeah, I've got my notions pouch in there. Take that out. So this is how far I've got, and I stopped in the middle of the row, but you can see how the fade is kind of going to go. So if you see the cut different colors, so I'm super excited about that. That's a tissue, it doesn't need to be there, but it is. Let me turn this up. Whee, you can see my face again. So I had to pull this out last night because I was knitting a two stitch repeat that apparently I just made up myself a two row repeat and it's actually a four row repeat. So now I know that because I need to do it properly because it's a test knit. So I need to have this finished by the 31st of January. Thank you so much for that long deadline, Mina, because I was away for two weeks. Eek. So I'm going to catch up now, super fast. So um, not right now, although maybe right now because it's just purling, I'll just pair it back. So I've been working on this and I'm so excited about it. I need to read through again. There's so many options she can give you. It's so great. So I've chosen to do the stockinette version because I'm going to be fading. So I think the, the fade will be enough interest. Um, yeah, that's my that's what I think anyway. Maybe, might be wrong. Maybe not. So that's kind of the only things I'm working on. I have my VN sweater, which is just being ignored because I'll just start it later. Maybe I'll do it in February because it's kind of green. It's like springy summer cardigan. I don't know. I feel like a nice cozy one. So what else have I been obsessed with? Oh, I really want to make a hap. I want to make a hap so badly. And I've now got the yarn. I went to John Arbin's mill, which I'm going to be um, uploading the video sometime soon to edit it. I need to edit it. I think I need to add in um, subtitles, which is why I'm being super slow with that. Because I need to clear off my computer to move all the files over and then I need to edit and make sure I still have enough space because my computer doubles the amount of space anytime it wants to like export anything. It's exhausting. Whatever. Maybe it'll be alright. Might be okay. So yeah, that's what I'm planning on doing. It's going to take me a long time to put in subtitles though. You know that Camaborneia podcast is so amazing. <sighs> yeah, it's super wonderful. So uh, yeah, so yeah, I went to the John Arbor Mill and I got some beautiful Devonia and I got a load of little minis from the Knit My Numbers range and I think I'm going to do a really nice big huge hap. So exciting. I also want to start a crochet blanket with all of the stuff that I have, all the minis that I have. And yeah. Oh, but the big thing I want to do, and I don't know how Beans is going to take this, but I want to weave another scarf. So let's talk a little bit about weaving. 
so in my podcast, I know in my vlogmas, I took you on the um, class that I went on and I wove this scarf in the class by the Guild of Irish Weavers, Spinners and Dyers. And I love this scarf, but I want one a little longer and I want one. So this is out of my hand spun. I haven't finished off the ends properly, so they're all a bit raggedy. They're not all the same length, so I need to do that. But I rented a loom and I only rented it for a month. And I want to rent it for another month because I know that I won't have anything done. But, so, oh gosh, let me see. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me see here. So the next one I want to do, I want to make it out of this as the warp, but it's not enough. I had, um, I got it out ready to go, um, but it, there's just not enough in it. It looks like there's a lot, there's not. It's a hundred grams, but I must have spun it super thick or something anyway. So I'm going to stripe it with this. I'm going to um, stripe the warp with another part, another bit of my hand spun. This is Marine, they're both Merino, but this is the Merino that I had been um, carding and spinning myself. So I'm going to use some of that in this and that's going to be okay, I think. The reason I really want this as the warp and something dark with it is because dark colors mixed with, co make dark things, a dark color mixed with a brighter color makes the brighter color pop. Whereas if you pop it with a, a brighter, a lighter color, um, it kind of fades it down and the colors aren't as intense. And I worked so hard on trying to get these colors right that I don't want them to like fade down too much. I'm gonna do a gradient. I'm gonna do a gradient from the end to the end. I was thinking about maybe doing the warp in this and the weft in this or something, but I really want them to tie in because I, I, I really organized this skein so that this like teal would match up with this teal. So I'd start off with the white and then move slowly down into this like deep navy. So I think that'd be so nice. Because, so what happened with this one is this was done with one gradient skein. So the warp was gradient and the weft was gradient. So it started off, where did it start? So you can see the way that it, it faded from side to side, like that. So that was the, the warp going on. I started with this green side and then I warped it this way. And then, yeah, I started the weft, this, this color here. See, this is kind of the most solid of the entire thing because I warped it up like this and then I came to this side and then I started weaving across like that. And then it fades down deeper, 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 the weft across, across the way. Um, but the, the green is still showing up in it, which is nice. And then this is the deepest color that it comes to, is this brown. So I liked that, but I kind of wanted a fade, like proper fade from start to finish. So that was my thinking. So I'm gonna do that. So I've got one of these sample looms from the Guild. And um, the green is still tied on because I haven't taken off because I started doing it before we went to get beans. And then I was like, mm, there's no point getting beans. Well, doing it while beans is around. But he's going to be around forever, so you've got to get used to it. Mm -hmm. So it's a small of these Ashford um, sample it looms. And that's probably, you probably, that's the prob that's the width that you can get on a sample it loom. Around this width. It seems like you could get a bit more, but sorry, beans, sorry, fell off. Oh, poor little thing. So yeah. So you get the whole kit with it to rent it for the month, ten euro. Uh, I think it's 40, 40 euro deposit, something like that, which is totally fine. So yeah, that's what I'm planning to do. I might do that today. Be nice. I think I'm gonna put on some Christmas movies and play with beans, have him cuddle up and be cute. He's not having it. Um, I've just woken up him up by um, letting, a, letting a clamp fall on his face. He 
seems cool with it. So that's fine. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, I wanted to talk about a couple of things that came in the post. And a couple, oh yes. So, when I went to John Urban Mill, I met up with this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful friend of mine. And we've been talking on Instagram a lot about moving from Australia and things like that because she's just moved up. And, um, but she gave me this beautiful skein of yarn. I mean, have you ever seen a more perfect skein for me? It's like the ocean. Oh, it's amazing. It's Malabrigo, Kettle Dye Pure Superwash Merino, um, and the colour 809 Solace. Oh, I love it. This goes with pretty much everything in my stash. <laughs> Thank you so much. And look at this beautiful bee. She's got on there. It's so cute. Thank you so much. I love this. Um, I also got an amazing thing in the post. My wonderful friend Eva sent me this. And Eva, you're ridiculous. You're a ridiculous human. Very cross, but also not. So, she sent me this incredible masterpiece of a planning to the New Year's coming. Planners ahoy! I got a passion planner. Oh my gosh, it is beautiful. This is kind of embossed into it, if you can see. It's kind of been like stamped in. Oh, it's so pretty and it's my colour and I love it so much. She also sent this incredible sticky note set, which is also a uh, passion planner inspired, I think. Hema. Hema. Maybe not. But like, I mean, have you ever, like, it matches. And it's got little plants all over it. Look at all the little plants. These stickers came in the passion planner, so. Let me show you what's inside. So it starts off showing you how to do things and then it starts off like your passion roadmap. So I was working it out and that's when I realized that some things needed to go and some things needed to be worked on a lot harder. So, and I'm, I'm really glad because you want to only do the things that bring you, I'm um, not only, but you, you want to only do the things that bring you joy in life, right? So this is what this passion planner is about. It's about setting those goals, breaking them down into small manageable steps and then doing it. So this is my, I've already mapped out my first week of 2018. So it's basically work, 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 work. <laughs> but then I've got all my different um, times and dates and things and I've just got lipstick on it. That's sad, but it wipes off. So that's excellent. So it's got these sections up here. Um, I've got to pull my Patreon prizes, post them out, cast on James's sweater for the epic along on the 1st of January. I'm going to do, try and do yoga every day. That's not going to work. Um, I'm going to try and dye five skeins, organize knit night. So it's got like a, it's got a monthly spread every month, the start of the month. And then it's got four weekly spreads which makes sense. And then at the end of the month, so four weekly spreads, they look like this. And then at the end of the month, they've also got a smaller one available too. Um, hey, stop that. Beans is there. And so you've got a monthly reflection set. So it's kind of, did you do all the things you wanted to do? Why not? It's kind of accountability, which is lovely. So yes. So at the back then, there's a huge amount of space for drawing. There's like blank pages. There's also squared pages, a big fan. Um, and there's a little pocket at the back. Shiny, shiny pocket of loveliness. So yeah, and they're all hand inspected. Like that's signed by a person, a real person. They had a, um, I think they got big on um, Kickstarter. I think that was their thing. There's some really nice um, ways, like videos on YouTube about how to do that and everything. So thank you so much. Eva. I've had so much fun with this. It's going to stay on my desk and I'm going to try and get up every morning and come down and set my day and do my, do my, my morning pages and um, try and sort myself out because I need to do that. 
things have gone a bit weird in my brain, so I need to sort that out. So that's going to help me. When I arrived in John Arbin, I got an I got an email from Juliet Arbin, and she was like, "Oh, the, um, uh, Christine has left a package for you. I sent a sent a letter here, and so don't forget that." And I was like. So showed up and it's one of my Instagram followers, like a really lovely friend of mine. And of course I knew her name was Christine, but like, I'm like, I don't know anybody, any Christine who works in John Arbin, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, it must be someone. So she couldn't come down to see us on the day, um, but she really, really wanted to. So hopefully next year, I'm making it a yearly thing, by the way, my, my yearly pilgrimage to John Arbin. So she sent me a wonderful little card, which, and she sent me this <laughs> adorable. Um, these are small stitch markers, nine millimeter rings, mermaid scales, and they're made in Cornwall. And they're stunning. Let me show you. They're in this tiny little bag. Oh, Christine, you're so sweet. You really didn't need to do this, but you know, you know that. Ah, oh, these are the most beautiful things I have seen in a long, long time. They're like all different colors. There's this little mermaid on a bit of ball. And then there's pinks and like really deep tealy blues. And there's this like pearly white one. Oh, they're stunning. Oh, they're so pretty. I've got an idea for a shawl using some billium um, in these kind of mermaidy colours and I've got I got some beads when I was in France do I have them and I want to um, I've got four of these little beads and I I can't wait they're going to be so pretty so yeah they're going to go so nicely with this little set I'm so excited I need to find the right pattern gonna be nice and fall somewhere. I think I might do the Gronia by um, <sighs> Knitterarium by Ruth um, because it looks super stunning um, but also quite simple you know and effective and pretty and it's like a semi-circle pie shawl like half pie ish or crescent -y shaped so, um, yeah, I think I might do that. It's so pretty. So, so pretty. What do you think, Beans? Yeah, he agrees. It's going to be beautiful. So, that's all I can think of to say at the moment. I know for sure that I have forgotten everything. Um, as for the VK and stuff, I really hope you don't mind... What I, what I need to do, I need to do, so that's that. And I believe, like I've had it up, like we, I've been running the VKN for a year, I think that's a really good, um, it's a really good thing and it'd be so nice to kind of pass it on to someone else, to for them to run it for maybe a year, you know, and to kind of pass it on through the community because I think it is um, a wonderful thing to do. It is, I've learned so much from it and I've gained so much from it and the friends I've made from it, I will have forever. I don't want anyone to feel that I'm abandoning them or anything like that. That's not what I'm doing. Um, I really do want to still take part, but I, I just can't be in control. Because even if I am, like, if someone else takes it, you know, if, if the moderators take it on, but it's still under my name, I still feel responsible for it, you know? And I just don't, I just don't know if I can mentally do it anymore. So that's fine. We all have to take care of our mental health, don't we? And Beans is helping me with that, aren't you Beans? Let me just let me just hide the the yarn and the yarn prizes more importantly from the kitty. Hey kitty. Hey kitty. What are you doing? Where are you going, kitty? Come on, aunt my lap. Don't go into the weaving basket. No. 
this is a bit of a dangerous position even taking him into the room but he was asleep on my lap so I was like he's fine he's fine he's like he calms down like instantly the second you put him on his lap he's just used to people he's used to being petted he's such a pet so yeah he just wants a body anybody will do you big hero <laughs> that's a nice thing in Irish So thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you have had a wonderful kind of coming up to Christmas, um, whatever you celebrate, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. I hope you are having a lovely time. Um, I hope the dark isn't getting to you too much if you're in a dark country. I hope the heat is kind of e easing you into it gently if you're down south. Um, and yeah, I, I really hope that you are contemplating over the last year in this time of change, in this time of like new beginnings coming up and um, trying to decide what you want um, for 2018. I think that's super important. Um, is there anything like that, anything important that you think is coming up in 2018? I'd love to hear. I'd love to find out what's going on in your life. And um, yeah, is there anything you want to work on in 2018? Not like a resolution, just like a, a life change. Oh, I suppose that is a real resolution, isn't it? Um, yeah, but you know, important things for 2018. What is 2018 bringing for you? So I think it's important to kind of look ahead and be like, hmm, what would I like it to be? Instead of us just kind of rolling into it and dealing with whatever happens. Although that's generally how I do it. <laughs> Happy festive season. Happy everything. I'm learning a lot about all the different um, kind of midwinter traditions. Um, I'm learning a lot about um, Hanukkah. That's really interesting. I'm following the Yarn Pimps um, Hanuk um, Vlogmaka, which is like really nice. Um, yeah. Have you learned anything new about this season? What other people celebrate? I celebrate presents. All the time. I've not even saved anything for myself. Amy from Standard Eye Works was putting like her little treats under the tree. I was like, I should have done that. We don't even have a tree yet today. We're getting the tree today after James comes home from work because there's one, there's a place that sells trees just um, outside of his work. So that's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna go lie down because I've got this really bad headache that's not going away. So I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, signing off. Do you want to say bye, Beans? No, not really. <laughs> he does love me, honestly, when I'm not being weird and annoying. Stop, 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 stop. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't do that right. I'm sorry. Bye from Beans. Yeah.